Welcome back, horror fans, cinephiles, and giallo enthusiasts. It's Tanner Leeser, your host for The King in Giallo. This is episode 14 of the Forgotten Giallo film series, 1970, part 1. And I've got one giallo here I'd like to highlight. As always, thanks in no small part to Troy Howard's book on giallo cinema, So Deadly, So Perverse, 50 Years of Italian Giallo Films, Volume 1, 1963 to 1973. Like this video and subscribe to The King in Giallo and do ring the notification bell. On to the video. The second Giallo of 1970, first one following the success of The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, is Death Occurred Last Night, an Italian and West German co-production. I tend to think most of the Italian and West German co-produced Giallo are likely to feel and behave close to German Krimi films, but let's find out for sure. The film is directed by Duccio Tassari. The film is written by Arthur Browner, Biagio Proietti, and Duccio Tassari, while being based upon a novel originally by Giorgio Scarbanenko. The music is by Gianni Ferrio. The players in the cast include Frank Wolf as Duccio Lamberti, Raf Valoni as Amancio Berzaghi, Gabriel Tinti as Mascaranti, Gillian Bray as Donatella Berzaghi, Eva Renzi as Mrs. Lamberti, Gigi Rizzi as Salvatore, and Beryl Cunningham as Herrero. The plot of the film follows Inspector Duccia Lamberti and Mascaranti, his assistant, who are brought on to search for the whereabouts of a missing girl, Donatella, who is mentally handicapped. Donatella's father, Amancio Berzaghi, takes on his own investigation as the inspector's search runs into a series of dead ends. They fear that Donatella may have been sold into a racket for prostitution. Addressing what I said earlier, Death Occurred Last Night is not trying to cash in on the Krimi subgenre, but rather a different popular genre at this time, the poliziotesky crime genre. In retrospect, perhaps because the film commonly falls under the umbrella of a poliziotesky crime film, Jallo and Thriller fans tend to overlook it. Which is shameful, as it would turn out, the film is one of the more solid, intense, and raw thrillers of its time. The original novel in which the screenplay is adapted from is E Malanesa Amanzano Il Sabato by Scarbanenko. As discussed in a previous video, his literary works would be adapted numerous times, most notably by Poliziotesky director Fernando de Leo in such films as his Proto Giallo Naked Violence 1969, Caliber 9 1972, and The Italian Connection 1972. Similarly to Naked Violence, this film is not, strictly speaking, giallo through and through. The majority of the runtime plays out as a police procedural steeped in social commentary, but the final act of the film is where the giallo genre takes the reins and delivers one hell of a ride. Beyond the thrills, this film is able to resonate with audiences so well because of the presence of characters who are filled with depth and have dimensions. From the emotionally sympathetic father to the police detectives who deliver a rarely seen in the genre level of humanity for cop characters, to the daughter who does a great job both conveying her handicap and elevating the character beyond the trope of just a nameless victim. These elements make it easy for the audience to invest their time and focus into the story and eagerly anticipate how the mystery will play out because they want to see balance restored and these good people win. There is a strong underlying theme in the film which gets pulled up from the depths and that is of the indifference of good people, a society of selfish individuals overly invested in their own lives to the point that they turn a blind eye to the evils occurring around them. This theme is also explored in Don't Torture a Duckling 1972 by Lucio Fulci. The story and characters allow this film to flourish without needing to rely on exploitation of violence or sex. That being said, the film does still explore dark themes in its plot, but these are handled in a very mature way, and the direction pulls this off with style. The film moves along at a good and steady pace, and the events are captured in a way which elicits a gripping sense of realism, yet never sacrificing the style. The score brings everything together and heightens the dramatic tones of the story's telling. Frank Wolf, an American actor, brings a rich life to this cop character, and the relationship between him and his much younger assistant allows for some levity to break up the tension of the more macabre elements. 
Gabriel Tinti was born in 1932 and debuted in film in 1951. He appeared in numerous small roles from Raoul Walsh and Mario Bava's Esther and the King, 1960, to Flight of the Phoenix, 1965 by Robert Aldrich, and Rider on the Rain, 1970 by René Clément. He was a regular in Italian genre flicks such as Lisa and the Devil, 1972 by Mario Bava, as well as he and his wife, Laura Jemser, would appear together in some sex romps. He was seen in the pilot for Mayberry RFD, 1968. Beyond this film, his other jelly credits include Tropic of Cancer, 1972, and The Secret of Seagull Island, 1981. He passed away at the age of 59 in 1991. Raf Valoni was born in 1916, an aspiring soccer player who converted to acting and debuted in film in 1942. This shift might have been the best decision of his life, as he would go on to be regarded as one of the most esteemed character actors in Italian cinema. He appeared in such films as Bitter Rice, 1949 by Giuseppe De Santis, Two Women, 1960 by Vittorio De Sica, The Italian Job, 1969 by Peter Collinson, and The Godfather Part 3, 1990, by Francis Ford Coppola. He acted until he passed away in 2002. Duccio Tassari was born in 1926 and began as a screenwriter and assistant director, then debuted as director in 1962. He made a name for himself with A Pistol for Ringo, 1965, and The Return of Ringo, also 1965, Spietti Westerns, starring Giuliano Gemma. But he would dabble in most all of the big genre fairs of the time with films like The Bastard, 1968, a poliziotesky, For Love, For Magic, 1967, a musical, Zorro, 1975, a swashbuckler, and The Bloodstained Butterfly, 1971, another giallo. Due to the collapse of the Italian film industry in the 1980s, Tassari would make the switch to directing TV miniseries. Duccio Tassari might not be on the Mount Rushmore of giallo directors, but he is every bit a competent director whose work deserves to be explored. He passed away at the age of 67 in 1994. And that's part one for 1970. I hope you learned something new here. If you are interested in watching this movie, look it up online. If you do watch it or have already seen it, I invite you to leave your thoughts on it in the comments. Follow The King in Giallo on Instagram and give a like to The King in Giallo on Facebook. Subscribe here on YouTube if you aren't already and join me every week for new Giallo film content. Upcoming content on The King in Giallo will be the overview, review, and gialli tally for the 1970 Giallo Five Dolls for an August Moon, directed by Mario Bava. Thank you very much for your continued support. This is Tanner Leeser for The King in Giallo, and if nothing else, I'll see you next time. You are kindly requested to behave for 15 days because I have to cure my sinusitis. <laughs> Olé!